friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin, and if you're looking for some new pasta recipes, I have four amazing dishes that will take your standard pasta night and set it over the edge. So come along with me and let's get cooking. This Mexi pasta is a dish that my sister came up with many years ago, and it is actually one of my absolute favorites. Her family is actually keto now, so I make sure to eat an extra serving in her honor. We're just gonna cook down our bow tie pasta, and once that is finished, just set to the side. For the meat, I'm using one pound of Italian sausage. I'm using the hots just because I love that extra flavor this gives. Drain this and add in one can of rinsed black beans and one can of Mexicorn, followed by as many diced green chilies as you would like. And I do like to add in jalapenos. This part is totally optional. I don't think it was in her original recipe, but I love jalapenos and I love that extra kick. So just mix this all together until it kind of gets warmed up. You're not really looking to cook it, you just kind of want to warm it up. So once you have that done, just add back in your bow tie pasta and then we're going to be adding salsa verde to this. I would probably say half a cup, but just as much as you would like. This recipe is just throw everything together and it comes together so easily. I just finished mine off with some Mexi cheese and I stuff my face. This Alfredo sauce is super easy to put together and it is so much better than the store sauce. So to my hot skillet, I'm adding in four tablespoons of butter, melt this down and then add half of an onion followed by three cloves of garlic. After just a few minutes, I'm adding in two cups of heavy whipping cream, giving this a stir. For my seasonings, I'm using Italian seasoning and crushed red pepper. For me, I like my Afredo to be just a little bit spicy, but not set your mouth on fire. So I feel like that crushed red pepper gives it just enough hit that add in a little bit of oregano and then just whisk this together and let it simmer just for a few minutes. Follow this by four tablespoons of cream cheese, just whisking together until your cream cheese is fully combined. Sprinkling in some Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to finish cooking my fettuccine in the Alfredo sauce. And then I just serve this up with some air fryer fried chicken. If you would like to see how I made this, let me know in the comments down below. Homemade mac and cheese is something surprisingly I've never made before, so this was my first time. To my hot skillet, I'm melting down 6 tablespoons of butter, followed by 6 tablespoons of flour to make a roux. Once you have a paste-like consistency, I'm adding in my seasonings of garlic powder, onion powder, and ranch seasoning, salt and pepper to taste. I feel like the ranch seasoning just made it a little bit more southern or something. I'm not really sure, but it gave it a really good taste. So once you have your seasonings, pour in one and a half cups of milk, followed by one half cup of heavy whipping cream, and just stir this together until everything is combined and you have no more chunks. This took probably about two to three minutes or so on a low heat. So just stir this completely, and then I am going to be adding in three cups of cheddar cheese. Now, of course, the block cheese and shredding them myself definitely would have melted this down a whole lot better because we know bag cheese doesn't melt that well, but this is what I had on hand, and I feel like it worked out really good. If y'all have seen me make that cheese sauce before, it didn't turn out the first time, but I feel like this time I had it in the bag. I just added a little bit more milk just to kind of smooth it out just a little bit, and then I'm just going to pour this over a 16-ounce box of noodles that are fully cooked stir this together. Now this definitely wasn't like a craft mac and cheese. This was more like the Velveeta mac and cheese consistency. But I'm just going to pour this into my baking dish. I'm topping it with a little bit more of the cheddar cheese and we're just going to cook this for 20 to 25 minutes at 325. And Blair was feeling sick this day so I knew that she would just eat it if I added some more cheese. Another great option you could have done like a crust on top. I've seen people do like crushed um, onion chip thingies, but I don't know. The cheese just felt like a good touch to me. Now this is our stuffed taco shells. I just cooked this at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. It came out nice and cheesy. I will definitely be making this one again because it was so delicious. 
To see how I made these stuffed taco shells, make sure you check out last Sunday's freezer meal video. The rest of those recipes will be included in my Croptober videos, so hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out on everything October has in store. And we'll catch you guys next Sunday for my first fall video. Bye!